All right, guys, today we're going to take a look at a brand new lock picking kit. I got this from Lockpick Extreme for $29. It is designed for beginners. There's a couple things about it, though. I would like to tell you that the owners of Lockpick Extreme are board members of an organization called Tool, T O O O L. And the entire mission of them, of course, is to attract new people to the lock sport. Now, Tool is probably familiar to some of you guys. I think a lot of you have these or have seen these. These are the Wonder Rakes. I got these directly from Tool. Uh, these are also designed by a woman named Christina Palmer, probably one of the most gifted lockpick designers in all of Locksport. In fact, I've got a lot of her uh, writings about lockpick design and use on the website. If you're interested in that kind of thing, I'll put the link down there so you can get the free downloads off of lock, uh, the Lock Lab download section. Anyway, back to this. Christina also designed this entire kit. Again, for beginners. It's made out of 301 hardened stainless steel, and you might recognize this guy. It's one of the same picks we just took a look at. So, you get a total of 12 pieces and a total of six picks. But for beginners, a lot of people might not have told you that probably the most important part is not so much the picks. I mean, you're going to need a pick, no question, but the tensioning. So let's take a look at the tensioners first because we got something unusual here. First of all, they've color coded these. So we got, they call it gray, but I think it's black, purple, and white. So that would be 30 thousandths of an inch or 0.75 millimeter. The purple is one millimeter or 40 thousandths of an inch. And the black or gray, whatever you want to call it, is 1.25 millimeters, which is 50 thousandths of an inch thick. Now you got two sets here, and this is kind of unusual. These are your typical bottom of the keyway tensioners, and we'll use these in just a minute as I demo a couple of the picks. These may not be so easily recognizable. They look like bottom of the kiwi, but they're awful short. And in fact, this is like old school stuff. In order to keep the cost down to $29, they didn't want to include any flat turners for top of the kiwi. So instead, they use what we used to use, and that was the, these little guys. Now, we'll show you how to use this real quick. Um, the first thing is take a look at the thickness of your kiwi and try to find one that fits as tightly as possible. Now, let me show you the wrong choice first. This is the one with the white handle, so that would be 30 thousandths or 0.75 millimeter. When you slide it into the top of the keyway, notice how when I apply tension, it flops down kind of in my way. It obstructs the keyway, and also when I put tension on it, it kind of rolls down directly in front of the key. Well, that is exactly what you don't want. And that's, you know, having three thicknesses gives you a little bit more option. So let's grab this guy, 40 thousandths, one millimeter, and we slide him in there. He's a little tighter. And when I push down on him, he doesn't obstruct my keyway, and he also doesn't roll out of there. So choice of your tensioner is absolutely critical. Um, if you don't like doing it this way, and I probably would not, I would probably roll him over on this side and then tension him with my thumb. It's a little bit awkward, but that way it's guaranteed. It's not going to be getting in my way, and it's tensioning in exactly the way I want it to. So there's your top of the keyway tensioners. We also have bottom of the keyway tensioners, and I'll keep using this to demo some of this stuff. Um, so bottom of the keyway tensioner, same thickness as I used on top, and I can just slide him right there in the bottom. All right, before we dig into that, let's set him off to the side there. Let's look at some of the picks that Christina has designed. The first thing we're going to take a look at is this guy. This is the uh, large quad cycloid. And I got that right because I took it directly from their website. So quad meaning four, cycloid meaning the style of curve. But I'm a simple-minded kind of guy. I can't remember all that. I'm going to call this the large. Now, why do I call that the large? Well, if you got a large, you're going to have a small. In fact, you do. You have a small quint cycloid. So five peaks versus four peaks. And when you hold the two of these together, I think you can easily see that the quad is a little bit taller in that direction. So if we grabbed our lock and our quad, or large, and tried to slide him in there, he really doesn't fit very well. I mean, I can jam him in there, but the problem is it's right at the top of the keyway. He's shoving all the pins up to the highest possible setting, and he's just not going to do a very good job of raking for us. Raking, of course, is probably one of the first things you want to take up, so you need to understand how to go about it. Instead of having the large one, take the, little, the, the quint cycloid or the small. And when you slide him in there, you got a lot more room. The, the pins have plenty of room to flex up and down. You apply a little bit of tension, and then you just kind of randomly roll this guy around back and forth until you get an open. Now, why do I do it this way? Well, as a beginner, you got to learn two things. One is 
tensioning. You've got to learn to, to control the tension, not too much, not too little. And at the same time, you've got to learn to control the pig. So you've got two moving parts you're trying to coordinate, kind of like, you know, rubbing your belly and patting your head. Sometimes it's a little hard until you practice. With this, you really don't have to pay a lot of attention to what that rake is doing. All you've got to really pay attention to is your tensioner and just move this guy in and out until you get an open. When you try that for a little while, it helps build your confidence and it helps you get a good feel for what kind of tension to put on this before you move to the next phase, which would be single pin picking. So let's take a look at that. For single pin picking, Christina has selected four different picks. Now the first one is very, very common, a half diamond. This is very useful because not only can we use him to single pin pick, but because he's got that angle on the front, we can actually use him to rake or zip. Um, very easy to do. Let's take the same lock. Let's just put that on the bottom there. I don't have the key for this, by the way. It was a, Somebody sent it to me eh, as an, to open, and it, it turns out it's got decent bidding, but like all master locks, it's a great training lock. All right, so the way we would zip, we apply, again, you've got tension under control because you practiced your raking, and then you can just basically roll this guy out like that, or I call it zipping because it kind of, it sounds like a zipper, and this doesn't always work, but on master lock, it usually does. So now what you're doing, you're paying attention to your, your tension on your tensioner, as well as you're trying to control, you're still raking, but you're only raking one pin at a time. So you've got to pay attention to placement and you got to pay attention to control as you try to bring it out. And then eventually you'll get an open. I mean, it's a master lock after all, right? All right, let's pull this pick out of there and set him aside. This next pick will not fit into the keyway, but it's a really popular pick. It's designed by, as I said, Christina. They call this the spoonbill pick, and it's designed for single pin picking. Now, it's an unusual design. I don't have a lot of experience with it myself, but notice, and this is not, I've been using it for a week. I did not put that band there. It's designed that way. And the reason it's designed that way is, let's say that your pin in the very front or in the face of the lock is cut low. In other words, it's hanging as far down as the keyway as it will go, but you got a high cut pin pin in the very back. Well, that little curve will allow you to get under that low cut pin in the front and the tip will allow you to reach around and kind of pick the one in the back. Christina designed this because she said it's much more maneuverable in modern keyways. So I don't have one of these. I'm going to have to get one and, and kind of check that out. These next two are pretty common. The bottom one here is a, a short hook or standard hook. And the one above that is a medium hook. So depending on what you're bidding inside of your lock is like, how much you need to raise those pins, that would determine which of these two you picked up. Basically, if that one doesn't work, that's my go-to pick. If it doesn't work because I can't reach high enough, I'll throw them down, pick this guy up, and then get in there. Now another t uh, technique that you might want to pick up, again, trying to coordinate your tensioning with your pick and then the pick placement is what I call, well, bullying the lock open. Now this will work really well on master locks uh, because they don't generally have security pins. And I like the number, this is a number five. It's also, there's also a number three. This one, it had, they have the same core, the same internal locking mechanism, and both of those are four pins. I like the number five, it's just a little bit bigger, fits in my hand better. All right, so what I'm going to do, I like to start in the, in the back, but you can start anywhere in the lock. It really, the lock doesn't know, and it really doesn't care. So let's just, let's start in the front, just for the sake of argument. So apply what I call moderate to heavy tension. And if you take a look at that, you can see a little dent on my finger there. So apply moderate tension, and then take the pick in there and find a pin that doesn't want to move. And so you find that first one, he's still spring-loaded, still spring-loaded. And you just move around inside of there until you find a lock that doesn't want to move, and then you force him, you bully him into place. And then they all will, event there's only four of them, eventually they will click into place. Now, if you overset something, in other words, if you're a little too forceful, if you put way too much tension here, it's going to be hard for you to figure out what your pin placement is and pick that lock, so, and uh, pick that pin. Sometimes it might push too far, or you may overset it, and that's, if that's the case, like I just did, release your tension. Look how much I have on there. Just release it. Try to have a little more control on your tensioning. And then slide them in there and then bully those locks. This will give you an idea about uh, how to control your tension. It's excellent for learning the single pin picking skills. Anyway, I've gone into a lot of stuff here that I wouldn't normally go to in a, 
uh, go into in a review. But this is a great little kit. It is designed for beginners. I realize a lot of my viewers have not bought lockpick kits because they've, I don't know, if been waiting or interested in the, the mechanics of locks or whatever. But if you're interested in getting started, you want a very durable, affordable kit, check out Lockpick Extreme. I'll put the link down there. I've never seen a higher quality, um, uh, low-cost kit than, than this guy right here. 25,000 stainless steel. Um, it doesn't come with a case. It, it, well, it does come with a case, and this is it. A little plastic bag to hold your stuff together. So I'm going to be giving all this away. And to make it interesting, I'm going to give away... You're going to need a case. So I've got an extra brand new Sparrows case, completely empty. Look, fit neatly into your pocket. I'm also going to give you, because I really don't need this guy, uh, a good training lock. The Lock Sports favorite training lock, which is Master Lock 4 Pinners. And to keep it really interesting, one of these guys. Uh, this is the training lock I think that most beginners aspire to. This is by LearnLockPicking.com. This is their six pinner and it is designed for new pickers. And you can tell in two ways. First of all, the keyway is very vertical and hardly any warding in there. So plenty of room to manipulate. And a keyway like this will allow you to get in and feel the pins without having to worry about navigating any of that odd warding. So nice straight keyway. The other thing, it is replaceable pins. So this one comes, they're obviously very th obviously threaded. Here are the, the plugs to plug those up along with the keys to go with it and an entire bag of repair parts. You know, I don't know, there must be a hundred springs in there and probably a couple of hundred different pins. So as you're learning, you can pin up, you know, say three of them with standard pins. And once you get the hang of that, pin up the fourth, the fifth, and then the sixth. When you get that, then go into your little bag and grab your security pins and start playing with spools or T-pins or serrated pins. The bag comes with all of them. Excellent, excellent training lock. You buy one of these, you don't have to buy, you know, like 50 different padlocks or door locks. Anyway, guys, that will be the giveaway this week. If you want to know how to register for the free giveaway, stick around and I will tell you. Appreciate your time, guys.